Hello, I'm Alan Pope and I'm the musical director of Cadwell Youth Band and here I am on the ferry just about to leave Dover on our historic trip to the World War I battlefields of Belgium and France. And this is a great opportunity for the band which we've been looking forward to and planning for now for the last 18 months and it's actually happening. Uh, the, the band, there's 28 players that are go, go, going on this trip and uh, their, their range, ages range from 11 years old. To my left we have Corey Williams and his great great grandfather was serving in a tear back in the, the First World War and uh, he was called Fred Negus and this bugle that Corey sold was the actual bugle that was used 100 years ago uh, out in the battlefields of France. Thomas Penn Horwood, we are honoured to pay tribute to you and salute you for the sacrifice you made. You, like many others, acted in the best tradition of Devon and Cornwall Police and we will always honour and respect your memory. We are proud to have called you one of our own. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun, and in the morning, we will remember them. One hundred years ago, these men played three games of rugby near this town between teams from Cornwall and neighbouring Devon, a lifetime rivalry. Some of the descendants of those men are here today. These matches were important because they reminded them of home. They said that instead of playing to the music of the band in Camborne, they played to the music of the guns. One hundred years on, a band from Camborne is back in a tear. They will, there will be the music of the band, not the music of the guns. We're going to play a 100-year-old bugle from the war in honour of these men and the people of Atair who stood alongside them. This bugle belongs to the great-great-grandfather of Corey Williams, who is in this band. We would also... We also would like to present the town of Atair with a rugby ball signed by the current Devon and Cornwall teams as a mark of gratitude.
I want to show it to Michelle. Thank you. Je peux dire un mot là où oui, bien. bien. Ici, vous êtes sur la terre du souvenir. Here, yes, here you are in a place of remembrance. On voit écrit les noms des victimes de la guerre 14-18, des enfants des terres qui sont morts euh, pour défendre leur pays. Uh, you can see the names here of the children of Eter who died defending their country. Mais nous n'oublions pas nous à Eter comme en France que si nous avons réussi à vaincre l'ennemi, c'est grâce à nos populations euh, alliées qui venaient d'Angleterre, du Royaume-Uni, du Pays de Galles, des États-Unis et qui nous ont aidé à combattre l'ennemi. But we don't forget that in fighting the enemy, we depended very much on our friends from Britain who came to help us Alors, and on... other allied countries.
Uh, we've come here today to visit many of the miners who have lost their lives in the First World War, such as William Lancaro, who's up there, and he was in the 177th Tunneling Brigade. He's from Four Lanes, which is near Camborne. Um, lots of them came from Camborne because of the mining industry, which meant they, they were able to dig under through no man's land to the enemy tunnels and um, plant explosives, trying to get kind of a mass um, hit, which was also obviously very dangerous. Often when it exploded, the eyebrow exploded with it, or the tunnels collapsed, and lots of bodies were never found, such as William Lancaro and many of the other men that we see here. Tens of thousands of names of men on this gate. Names of men that were never found. His name is Reginald Seymour Priest. 